Uh, good evening, uh, listeners and viewers of wherever you are out there. Welcome along to the History Show with me, uh, Tony Brown, on their that media TV. I think that's right, anyway. Tom, you're welcome again tonight. Thank you, Tony. That's and uh, it's lovely you're to you're see you. Stuck again. You're stuck again, you. <laughs> we have to break a rule and get out to Paddy Waldron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> None of the men out west mightn't come in anymore. <laughs> we'll have to get out to him as well sometime. Oh. He was handy as well yeah, when I'm yeah. stuck, you know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, so I'm talking about uh, local history. First of all, yeah. I should say that uh, I was watching a program tonight on television about uh, uh, an RTE personality gone round Ireland. Oh, it was out in Loch Oh, yeah. And, uh, there was, there was an absolute, there was nothing about Loch <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I thought now she might have gone into the history of Lockhart. Oh, I thought to see, I saw John Creedon today, and like it's frustrating because he 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 dots around. First of all, he was in Lupet, and next of all, he was in Kilkee, and you'd, he's going so fast, and there's no there's no substance. Of it. Like, oh, it's just, oh. you know, yeah, it's a, I thought I enjoyed it as well. We've been watching the he, same programs. And he, he had some fellas playing diddly eye music on the cliffs. Next of all, he's sitting around Corkscrew Hill. And next of all, he's hiding in Galway. I mean, he did the whole of <laughs> West Coast of Clare in 10 minutes, which is, you know, I mean. Really? Yeah. I mean, and they, you could do a full program on the like pro itself. All those problems are the same. They do the same. You go to the cliffs some more, you know. Now, he did go into Ennis Diamond for a while. But they should go off the beaten track and go in and meet people who aren't normally on. Uh, on, on Television. Now, I saw a good thing this morning. Uh, they did a tour of Ballyvorney, uh, you know, Sean and Rita country. And, and <laughs> what? <laughs> we said sad lives. And St. Gobnett. Uh, St. Gobnett, yeah. yeah, yeah. But they yeah. Get, you know, I mean, that shot, little piece, it was before the mass, I think. And, Very good. Yeah. And like, it was only done, I'd say, it was 10 minutes max. Yeah. But they did. They gave more in that shot snippet than John Green giving his whole program, you know. Um, but, I was there yeah. time a few years ago in Ballyborne, yeah. And uh, I would like that, we got to see the grave of of Sean uh, O'Regan, but also Sean O'Regan, yeah. And they also did to see that. That's a fabulous statue, beautiful statue, St. Cobbness. Very yeah. well done. I I'd, I'd say it was probably done by Seamus Murphy. And they have all the bees. She's the, obviously the patron saint to beekeepers. Yeah. And all the little bees. I mean, if you started this morning, everything they had had bees in the background. That's right. You could see on the wall in there. And, and but all the bees it. are all around from Nick. There were seven the deer. There were seven deer on the headstone as well. I didn't catch what that was about. Oh, she. That's when St. Governor set up her monastery. She's a putative, came along looking for a place. She obviously had yeah. about saints and looking for a place. Yeah. She yeah. came on a valley that had a, a herd of white deer. Oh yeah. I hope she was mistaken for Mallow Castle, where they had the, they had the white deer in Mallow Castle as well. They were yeah. there for a long, long time. I think they've gone out together now. Mm. But uh, she saw her the white deer, and she made hey, this is a place to to settle and have a monastery. Usually, most of the monasteries, anyway, you know, same in places like Ugan yeah. Barra and places yeah. like they were always in valleys. Yeah. Well, uh, Glendalough. There's so many of them all over the country that are in valleys. Mm. We did, obviously as, they had to have a supply of water, of fresh water. As, as, as the man said, we discussed that many times before. Uh, we discussed the like, quiet monasteries were sited, usually in boundaries, you know, oh, uh, dispute, disputed yeah. territory. Disputed you know. land. And like people don't realise that to say, wasn't he? I mean, the, the biggest, uh, I suppose, most obvious one for me anyway, is uh, Cockham Row, over yeah. the, the top of the bottom, which was the Stockdale yeah. Faculties moving in onto O'Brien property. Yeah. The same yeah. in Tipperary with Holy Cross. You mm. know, the, the, the Fogarty's and a few other clans down that way for moving again, moving into O'Brien property. The O'Brien's were claiming, claiming all that land yeah. in that area. But, but during, during the week when it was raining, I was going through some of my old um, carry archaeological magazines. And it's amazing the amount of people that wrote in it that are now dead, like, you know, uh, Brendan O'Cahir, who was Clarina Connections. Yeah. Uh, was right, and um, there was a very good article about Bishop Moriarty, you know, the fellow who who said about the Fiends that hell wasn't hot enough. Oh, yeah, hell wasn't hot enough. But then, yeah. for, for I continue that now, because when I hear the name Moriarty, 
I think of the slang to get people going in a pub years ago. Town yeah. Nawala, uh, Town Nawala, yeah, the head in the bag from the the murder yeah. of the Omar uh, Moriarty, yeah. wasn't this? The, the other the town of Yalt, yeah, where, where they beheaded uh, the other Desmond. That's right, yeah. The robbers known right. as Town Nawala. For this, Moriarty to get sour. But sorry, Tom, we're talking about I've been there a Yeah, I know. No, no, no. Uh, Bishop Moriarty, um, like there's lots of Moriartys and or more or more Moriarty. <laughs> it's like yeah. uh, the, B- the BBC commentator came over and couldn't pronounce me on Moriarty's name, but um, the, the the Bishop Moriarty, like he, I, I didn't I didn't realize why he opposed the Fenians because he was great friends with William Smith O'Brien and he he defended a lot of um, uh, we'll say Republicans before. But he, he was in contact with Bishop Newman in um, England, or Cardinal Newman, or Saint Newman, or whatever he's known. Yeah, yeah. They, were trying to get, they, were, they were trying to get the British government to give a Catholic university for Ireland. And they, they, they saw home rule as being, and, and the Fenianism as being, which would, would interfere with, the, um, with this campaign. And that's why he went against the Fenians. You know, um, like when you hear something, to, there's always a backstory, as I say, to to this, like you know. But yeah. um, it's like um, Bishop O'Dwyer, you know, he was anti-Fenian, anti-Republican, and he only re- reproved himself with the people after 1916. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah. Never yeah. ceased to fascinate me, and even that—that that always equates with me with South America. I know we're yeah. going to the modern times where you had some of the, the, the bishops and cardinals in South America. Against, I know they were against communism. That was their biggest threat. Yeah. But they went against yeah. the, the, the revolutionary sometimes, which is a pity yeah. as well. You know, did they want <laughs> socialism or not? You know, in some of the in places like Nicaragua and Venezuela years ago. You know, back in the sixties and seventies, that okay. happened as well. What was ama- what amazed me was back in eighteen seventy two. It was a by election, uh, and there was a pro Home Rule guy, and uh, there was a Leonard Hassett who was actually pro-home rule and uh, the other guy was anti-home rule and Bishop Moriarty went against Leonard Hassett because he was pro-home rule but the, a lot of his priests defied him and it was before it was the last election before the secret ballot in 1872 and a lot of them had to come out and they defied the landlord and they defied them and some of the priests that showed were transferred into poorer parishes as a, you know to punish them for going against him yeah. but you know I mean it was a brave priest that stood up that time and, and um, went against his bishop, you know. Well, there were uh, quite a few. Uh, in the middle there was your Father Kenyon, a uh, yeah. uh, uh, Kenyon, and then you had, is that the same Father Kenyon that was in Nina? Is it of the two, two different people? I can't. I don't, I can't, I don't know, I wouldn't yeah. know. One of the men who was involved in Nina, and one of, but there was a Father Kenyon, the other city in Syria, Limerick. We have okay, an avenue yeah. called after him out in Kilili, Kenyon Avenue in yeah. Kilili. Yeah. But, uh, but they were the same. They were kind of what the class, I suppose, the handy of class was rebel priests. Yeah. That stood up to yeah. both their Which own is, their own directors and also to, to the, but the bishops hadn't so much control over some of the elders. The yeah. bishops hadn't. You know, no. could, it's like uh, I know that in uh, is it Dan Star now? They have no authority yeah. over them. And the same in Mount St. Joseph's in Ross Gray. They're answerable yeah. only yeah. to the order itself and back to Rome. Whereas uh, the bishops even, control the sector of clergy. But even there's a lot, of, like even to this day, there will be a certain amount of rival, not rivalry, but you know, uh, orders, like ordinary clerics, so would say clerical Jesuits as being well, be a cut, trying to be caught above them, and also uh, went against the, you know, the, the the teaching of the Catholic Church. You know, they were different, and even you know, the orders, uh, like. The Jesuits never sat well with the ordinary priest, you know. Yeah, because I was, actually talking to the Jesuits, we're jumping here again off in place. But I was surprised that when the Pope, the present Pope Francis, that he was yeah. the first Jesuit. I really yeah. was amazed at that. I thought that I thought the, the Jesuits kind of ran the Vatican for yeah, years yeah, and years, yeah. and that half yeah, dozen of the yeah. Jesuits had, had been popes going back. But see, I, well, I presumed a lot more Jesuits, I didn't know. Yeah. yeah. And I was amazed yeah. because I'd read on uh, the Vatican over the years. I just I kind of presumed that the, the Jesuits, because they were such a powerful order, and yeah. uh, when, when they were first founded, really, I suppose, 
They were because yeah. I remember talking about mentioning him last week again, Todd Morrissey. I think their, mm. their initial training was for um I think it was was it was it eight years or eighteen years? That, uh, it was very long compared to the ordinary yeah. circle of priests we know in, in places like Minute or Carl yeah, or yeah. Torres. Yeah. But, uh, if they, and now they were also told, uh, I remember getting it confirmed back in the old times, they were told the Jesuits when they were being uh, talking to a female, don't look into her eyes, look at the yeah. forehead. Yeah. Because to, to, to kind of, I think, down the, the woman, the woman could okay. kind of mislead you. You weren't know, oh, yeah. yeah. to look straight into the eyes when you were talking but, to a female. But what is interesting as well is a lot of bishops were picked out, like. It was like, you know, the cadets in the army, you have a, like, you, you, you have a, a select few who are sent in the cadets. In, in Minute, you had the Dunboyne College, it was called. And if you were selected and sent to Dunboyne, you, you were anointed, unless you blotted your copybook, you were almost guaranteed to go at least to bishop, you know. Yeah. Uh, it was an elite squad for well, priests. Yeah. Uh, the Dunboyne, talking of Dunboyne, uh, uh, I had you many years ago on the radio, and the man that wrote this, uh, the new version of that book on Lord Dunboyne, from yeah. the book from what's it called from 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 bishop to lord, yeah. That he was uh, he was bishop, he was Roman Catholic bishop of Cork, yeah. And uh, he received a letter telling him he was next in line to become Lord Dunboyne. Dunboyne, yeah. And he being church uh, uh, Irish, Lord Dunboyne was Church of England. He was mm. given the choice what he was going to do. Was he was going to give up his faith and become Lord Dunboyne, yeah. or should he still remain Roman Catholic Bishop of Cork? And he took, he, he did, he renounced his faith, became yeah. whatever, I can't think what number Lord Dunboyne was, because there is a present Lord Dunboyne living in London, but he became Lord Dunboyne, and on, renounced, on his deathbed, of course, he was thinking of, yeah. of, of when he was, was he going to go to hair mass, yes. and he, decided, he turned back. Yeah. With the result, he left all his money then to Minute, oh. the building of the Dunbarn building. But Dunbarn his family uh, contested the will. Yeah. Uh, that the next Lord Dunbarn comes along, they were leaving all his money to the Catholic Church, which I said they must have nearly went crazy. But they contested yeah. the will. And I think it was hard, as far as I remember, between uh, Minute and yeah. the family. So they built what we know today as the Dunbine Halls. They, they, yeah. I think they're on the right hand side as you're going into the note. Beautiful building. Yeah, I was there. I, I remember. Most, I, well, most priests yeah. that have been to Minute are now familiar with Dunbine, the Dunbine Halls. Yeah. But I remember. You, you, you that's, talk, that's a lovely book, that book on, uh, yeah. on, 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 on about that, uh, that bishop yeah. that became Lord Dunbine. It's a, it's a very interesting story. But I, I thought originally, from way back when I saw, I thought they went up to Dunbine. You know, actually, the winter done by to be. Oh yeah. yeah. But as you you told me that about the the bequest, which which oh, yeah. is named after Lord Dunbine. But there was a Dunbine then. He lived outside in uh, he lived outside in the Pogue, outside in yeah. the Pogue Castle. It was belonged to the Dunbines. Yeah. And they're buried actually in uh, they're buried in in underneath in uh, in Quinn, Quinn Abbey. You can go down underneath to see where they are. The if you if you so close. And, and where is the where is the guy who who switched over and back? Where, where is he buried? I don't know. He, I don't know where he's buried. Is mm. he buried uh, uh, yeah. in in uh, in Quinn? I'm not quite sure. But they came back to Quinn because uh, there is uh, an article in the current edition of the other Clare about the Masons' marks that are in Dunbar yeah. uh, that are in the Pogue. Because I know when you win the gates in the Pogue, you have the Masonic symbol over the gates. I remember looking yeah. towards myself. They're over yeah. both gates going in and out in uh, in the mm. fog as we stand. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but I know that um that 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 the mines are buried in Quinn. You can go down underneath the the old abbey there, and you can see the all mm. the coffins inside of all the yeah. mines in through the grills. You can see them inside, yeah. and the, the amount I forget. I think they're up in the they're up in the twenties now. The the mines. I think the yeah. council is about is either the twenty fourth or twenty second. Lord Dunbarn, because most people associate it then with County Mead, you see, That's right. Dunbarn, where the title comes from. Yeah. Whereas people don't realize that as a gas title, you don't be actually be living in where your title is, you just have to own property yeah. in yeah. the in the, the land. Because the, the, the Marquis, the current Marquis of Donegal, is living down in Wexford. And you yeah. imagine that the Marquis of Donegal would be would living be in Donegal 
or his son. Well, the, the current guy was always known as Paddy Belfast because yeah. he's the Earl of Belfast. And he's living mm. down in uh, you know, Dunbrody, down in County, down in County Wexford. Yeah, yeah. You know, which is really you've, you've, met, you've met him, have you? I met him, I did. I met Paddy. Yeah. As he was known Paddy Belfast. A yeah. nice girl, actually. And he has, uh, yeah. his father was alive at the time. His father, yeah. he died about, father died yeah. about, he inherited the title then of the Marcus of Donegal. Yeah. Chichester is the, is the family name, really. But the, the sword yeah. of the big house, do you know who owns the big house now? That, that chef that we on television, uh, Dundon. Uh, I can't yeah. his first name Ke- now. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Dundon. Kevin, yeah, Kevin he, Dundon. Was, he turned it into a big cookery school to Dunbarn House itself. In, yeah. uh, well, Arthurstown as well is there, which is Arthurstown. It's when you come off the... Passages Ferry. When you come off the Passages Ferry, yeah. when you come off the ferry yes, from Passages to Passages West, you come up just past uh, Artistown. Artistown, yeah. Artistown, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's, um, but the current Paddy, uh, I don't know whether he's a son or not who would inherit the title Earl of Belfast, because you're yeah. a Marquess who's above an Earl, and then his yeah. son would be usually a Viscount under that, because yeah. uh, most people remember Lord Harrington. Who lived outside in well Barangari latter years, but he also lived in mm. Patrick Square at Greenmount. He was he was the Earl yeah. of Harrington. And his son then was Vic- a Viscount, Viscount Petersham. Is it his Earl Petersham is Larry Peter will remember Viscount Petersham because he was involved with the... Rick Sacker. Yeah. Back in the in, with God would it be the sixties or the seventies. Yeah. And I remember he drove first time and last time I ever saw a Jensen. I remember a Jensen car. You never see. I think they've gone off the market altogether. Jensen's, but he drove. He lived at Richmond yeah. Park outside in uh, in Patrick's Well. That's his daughter now. Yeah. That's married Viscount Lindley. I think they're they're being divorced or they are divorced now. She's uh, Serena yeah. Stanhope. Stanhope would be the family name. But yeah. but uh, getting back to Harrington, he was he was an Earl and his son then was a Viscount. Is and one of one of the people now? Is one of married to one of the princes? No, one of the. No, that uh, that his his uh, that uh, Petersham's daughter Selina was married yeah. to Viscount uh, Lindley. Lindley. Yeah, yeah, who was the son of Princess Margaret. All oh, right. And uh, we'll, yeah. we'll have to go. On, we'll have to go for revolution. Reason why they're going out. To the, to the <laughs> <laughs> to Actually, uh, a woman emailed a woman emailed me during the week, asked me what would be a good history of Limerick. So, like, where do you start? Do you, like? It I know very you're very difficult. Fair. You know, yeah. that, and then do you tell somebody to read that one of the best ever was Lenin's, of course? Oh, yeah. And then that's too advanced for some, well, too advanced, but uh, it gives an yeah. idea. Well, it's, uh, but it also stops in 1866. It doesn't cover, it doesn't cover the famine. And no, no. And it's, just, if you're looking yeah. for something that you forget yourself, uh, roughly around 18, 1870 or 1880, is yeah. it is. No. If no. I suppose Sean Spellacy's book on uh, yeah. the rich land is a handy kind of uh, a quick reference book. In a, in a, second, a second almanac. But, I mean, yeah. But you have, like you have Ferrers and, and Peter McGregor, and you have, then you have Begley's, which is a kind of a Catholic, a three volume history. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, um, it's yeah, difficult it's, to suggest. Yeah. Uh, even on last uh, Wednesday, I, this this chap um, asked me would I take his son out to show him Drumore Castle mm. outside in 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 well, between Kildare and Paris Kenway. Yeah. And I said I will. And he's asking me for weeks to take him out before he went back to school on Toria Wednesday, and he was going back to school on Thursday. Mm. So he had a bit of young had a bit of interest in in history. And my father wanted me to take him out to show him Drumore, so I I drew duly obliged anyway, but yeah. haven't gone out anywhere. Uh, the only the, the, the depression I'm sure you'll quite understand is I quizzed the young fella on the way home and I may as well have been telling the cats to look in my window, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, some children take it in, but he hadn't that much interest in it, you know, which is a pity. Yeah. So I couldn't yeah. explain much. All I could say was Drumore Castle was built by Lord Limerick. It's the very easiest yeah. way I could put it to him. And that there is a yeah. there's no one telling him about inheritance and how people get, he wouldn't be able to take it in. I think he was about. I think he was going into sixth class, so he'd be about 11 at uh, yeah. now. But anyway, but we went out anyway to see the tomorrow outside and mm. uh, talking about the lake. And uh, it, but there's much more I could really tell him, you know, because he was. Well, uh, the only thing I could I, tell him was the streets in Liverpool called after, I said the Perry's, P E R Y. 
yeah. Little Perry Square, I said to him, and you yeah. know the family name. And then I said, most of the stress. What streets do you know? Of course, he says, O'Connell Street. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That, was, that was the first one he picked. I said, that's a yeah. bad one, you know. <laughs> then, uh, yeah, yeah. So, and to, it's very difficult to get across to children sometimes about yeah. names, you know, how they come to own property and call streets after themselves. Because in Dublin well, you have that now as well. Is that in Dublin? You have the Moors, yeah. who were the, the elders of Dada, and they yeah. owned most of, of this Dublin. They called on Henry Street, Henry Moore, and Moore Street, and there's a few yeah. other streets called after them, you know. It's, uh, well, uh, Drogheda Street was before Sackville Street. That was Collins Street. Yeah, you see. So yeah. And then you had Henry Street, Moore Street, Earl Street, if not Earl Street. Yeah. Uh, and you were even of Lane at the back of, at the back of Cleary's of yeah. uh, of so Henry Moore Earl of Drada. You had all the streets yeah. there. The Cork Cork did the same. You had the Wintrops. Yeah. Wintrops yeah. on the fair share share of Cork, and yeah. you had the Wintrop Street, and you had a few more there. That's, because what's yeah. his name was related to the, the Wintrops. Do you know that man that did uh, he did the beautiful books on the landed the landed gentry. He lived out at Liz Lane out near Skibbereen on the way out there. Can't think of his name. He died a few years ago now. I think he was one of the. He was in. I think he was. Oh yeah, I, know, I, know, I, know. I, I, have, I have his book here. Um, ben Jones. Ben Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think his yeah. mother was a Wintrop. There All was right. no connection between him and him and the Wintrops. Yeah. But he did yeah. some lovely writing on, on on houses and families. Yeah, yeah. He was also a consultant to Bob Spearage. Because, because, um, he was a great man for speaking, the local history. Speaking of art, artist, one of the Guinnesses died during the week. Desmond Guinness died. Desmond Guinness, I didn't hear that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I met Desmond a good few times. He lived in Leeks of Castle. Yeah, yeah I didn't yeah. know that now. He'd be a good age, though. Oh, uh, yeah. One of the, what's this called? This, the, the Mitford sisters. The, the, the Mitfords. I yeah. think his mother was. And yeah. uh, he lived in Le uh, at Leeks of Castle. And I mm. brought a group there one time to see Leeks of Castle, and he gave us a great entertainment day. Now, the only thing we met him at the door, and he said, Walk away, my wife is showing around. I had to go, go and collect some cattle who were broken out in some fields. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he went out. He went off to look after these cattle who had broken, yeah. broken loose. Yeah. But he did an awful lot for the, the Georgian Society. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, over himself, the years. Himself, the, himself and the Night of Glen, of course, were. Oh, uh, I nearly forgot it, that you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, incidentally, your book, uh, that big book time you did on the night again, mm. is that, that's not available anymore now, is it? No, no. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't keep back a few. Yes. Like, like, well, I don't know, they're, they're demanding 350, 400 on the internet. Whether they get on that, I don't know. Um, but the, 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 night, the night just got it, we just got it out before he died, you know. Yeah. But um, I'm, I met, Des McGinnis with the night one time. But um I mean just wasn't it wasn't a meaningful encounter, just met him and spoke to him those yeah. like, you know. But they did lots of work. I mean the knight was a very interesting character himself, oh, yeah. but uh, his interests were, you know, with with the yeah. Georgian society and that. And a good speaker. Yeah. Excellent speaker. But, and oh yeah, but he was he was um like the, the uh, they were said like they did a lot of work for John Society and didn't get paid or get, you know, people think that they were paid, but it was all voluntary yeah. work, like you know, yeah. it was all you know, and they preserved a lot of buildings, you know, back in in their day there was no regards, you no. know, people just they demolished should, buildings. In the seventies, no, they, they demolished buildings and, and looked for attention then and got away with it, like you know, um, yeah. if you know the right people, you got away with anything, but you know, they they, they were listening. Yeah, the knights tried to, they were decided, the family tried to sell the place below them, didn't they, in Glen Castle itself. Yeah, and luckily yeah, it didn't yeah. sell. <laughs> you know? That's right, and, uh, yeah, yeah. It'll stay in the family. And of course, you're not yeah, having yeah. a son and heir, the title is gone. It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah which is a pity, really, really, because, was he, I think he was, was he the 20 something, 25th or 26th? Or? 29th, yeah. 29th, 29th yeah. yeah. It's a pity, because. It's, it's, uh, his grandchildren, like, well, that's not the way it works. It's the primogenitor, and yeah. uh, a, lot, a lot of people think Dominic West is the new Knight of Glynn. I suppose we're fitting well with him, wouldn't it, back in Glynn? I know it's lovely, yeah. lovely spot, this. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Spot. You know, yeah. when, when a, lot you... of people, 
Now, he, he, against best advice, he gave a permission to put a walk through his estate, you know, and like I think insurance and farm managers weren't in favor because it's spreading disease and, uh, you know, vandals getting, you know, security, everything. But he, he gave the concession and gave the permission and they, they built a lovely walk through his estate. You know, this is, you this is the right night's through. walk, is it? Night's walk, yeah. Yeah, night's walk, yeah. 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 But um, it's a, there's a, a big hill up to call it Hatsak Hill. Um, but, uh, it's, uh, well, he, he did a lot for the village now, and he was very good. When we set up the historical society, he was come to the meetings, you know, and um, he was very interested. And when we did the first journal, um, we had no money, and he gave us the money for the journal. And uh, when I went to pay him back, he said, he, he gave us a money to pay a deposit on, on the journal. And when, I, when we made the money, I, I said, he said, put it towards your next one. So he didn't, you know, like he was... It's in Carby, is it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In Carby, kind of. Why is it in Carby? Uh, that's the river, is it? Why, that's why... the owner, yeah. Yeah, well, it was... I suppose it's the only name for Glen, Glen Carbriga, the tribe of the Carbrig, Carbriga. Yeah. So, Glen Carbriga is an anglicised. It's the Glen Carbriga or the Glen of the Carbriga. Yeah. So Glen Carbriga is an anglicised name. There's a house. There's a housing estate down there called Glen Carbriga Estate, which is, it's better than, you know. Uh, yeah. Western Downs or, which yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or fisher fisherman's wharf out in there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. but did I he was interesting I thought over the years now that I met him, you know. Ah, he was you, yeah, you've yeah. done you've done um um walk tours of the castle, haven't you, inside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean it was, it's, it's it's it was eighty like it was sixteen hundred and eighty paying guests on one day there, like uh, you know, it was really Hectic from morning until from well from let's say half eleven until half six in the evening. Um, you know, eight hundred. What? Eight hundred. No, no. Uh, one, one thousand six hundred and forty. One thousand six hundred and forty went through. That's paying guests now, not including yeah, children. Yeah. But they were going to like process like a catch them out. Yeah. You know, try and get them through as fast as they and and then like every year there's Phenomenal interest. People came from North Kerry, yeah, yeah. Uh, East East Limerick City, you know. But the, the problem was, there was too many people. See, well, after the night died, there was rumours that the castle would be closed down, and people wanted to get their last. It was kind of a version of Downton yeah. Abbey, and some of them came in looking for selfies with Dominic West, which is not a story. Like you know, they weren't interested in getting the tour of the house at all. But look, every it's a great fundraiser for Glen Development because mm -hmm. charge a ten or a head, so. Yeah, if you yeah. Do, as they say, do the match. They're under eighteen thousand, I think, the first year, you yeah. know. And um, but it's like it's a, it's a, a remarkable story because <clears throat> you've all the old paintings there uh, from the time. Like, there's been two bankruptcies there, well, two four sales, one in eighteen oh three, and the other one just before the night died uh, after the financial collapse, and all all the furniture, everything was. Sold off in um, 1803, barred the family portraits because nobody wanted them. You know, nobody wants pictures of other families, and they were left. And um, but the knight bought back some of the furniture through his contacts in Christie's. But um, it's actually a fellow in London contacted me there about four years, four years ago, and, and he had the knight Lynn's book for some reason, and he he recognised he had furniture with Shannon de Boe on it. So he reckons that furniture in London was bought at the 1803 auction because he has it in the house for 30 or 40 years. He doesn't know how it came there. But that furniture was originally, it has, it has the crest, the Shannon de Boe and the Boer yeah, on it. Was that, that was on it, was it on the, on the furniture? On the furniture, yeah. So it, only for that we would know like where it came from. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's, it's interesting that over 200 years later, you know, we're still finding furniture that was sold off. Yeah, yeah. In, in you know, and uh, yeah. and we could match that there was some dining room furniture left in the castle with, with the same logo on it. Yeah. So we could match match it up. But it's 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 funny how things crop up 
you know, it even... Is, it is, because it reminds me then of another branch of the Fitzgeralds who moved, who uh, obviously became the eldest of Kildare, who lived yeah. in, in, uh, in Dalian, what we know now is Dalian, was the townhouse. But yeah, yeah. Is, um, and uh, car, uh, Carton, Carton House outside Carton, the yeah. And yeah. they had another castle quite near it called uh, Kilike, which is mm. a hotel, big luxury hotel now. But their war cry was Krumabu, as opposed That's to right. Shadidabu. Yeah. Even up in if you're the, going to... the taxi company called Krum, I don't go on the scene, there's a taxi, Krumabu Taxis. And there's a, there's, yeah. a, there's, a, there's a mural there with Krumabu on as well, in a tie. Yeah. In where? Yeah. In, uh, in a tie. There's yeah. a mural. There's a mural on the wall as you drive through Crumabu and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know servers in the Thai, but but like that, it's funny that that branch of the Fitzgeralds were there, and then you yeah. had the Knights of Kerry, of course. Yeah. Another branch. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and I think that title is still intact. Is it the Knights of Kerry? What is it? The present night um, is living down in um, in Waterford, down uh, just outside. Um, this more, I think. This more um, than Garvin or somewhere. No, this more. Just to say this more. Yeah. Uh, Isn't that that again? It's funny. He did live a, Their house was down in Valencia Island. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of the name of the house now. She's, and I can think of the woman that owned it. She was a German woman, a Mrs. Kreisig. Yeah. We went to visit that a few years ago as well. Uh, oh, Dan Lane. Dan Lane. We just talked about it now. Dan Lane. Yeah. And a beautiful house out on the island. I think actually, Nancy Kerry still retained. Access for a boat from oh, the island yeah. itself, yeah. as far as I know. Actually, the president of Knights of Kerry is very interesting. He wrote an, an article on the Knights of Kerry for the, the Glen book, and um, but he's not married, and he won't have any heirs either, so that title yeah. is going to die out. It's a nonsense. I suppose yeah. back to Henry VIII looking for a male heir, isn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. There, were, there were prefix with, with male heirs they had to have. Yeah, yeah. But, when I grew up, there was that farmer's prison. You know, weren't too happy when the head daughters born either, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but two other things. We'll go back to the night second. Just tell another yarn that comes to mind. Uh, when we visited Dan Lame house, this Mrs. Chrysig uh, brought us in and showed us around Dan Lame. But she showed us, there was a magnificent, huge, um, uh, what you call this, a thing with lights, what you call this, and then said the candelabra, like what she did. Uh, 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 um, what? Um, what do you call the thing for lights? I can't think what you call it. Chandelier. 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 Yeah. There was a huge chandelier in the hall, and somebody happened to say to her, that's unusual. Oh, yes, she says, I bought that in Harrods in London. Mm. And uh, somebody again then said, Harrods, why did you buy it? Because she said, Harrods will deliver and fit whatever you buy in the shop. Mm. So she said she purchased it anyway, and she gave her address as Dan Leem House. Valencia County County. Yeah. They sent over two fellas. Yeah. Delivered the chandelier and fitted it in our house. Now, yeah. I presume it was free of charge because they have this big sign up that everything is fitted and delivered and fitted by Harrods. But I always remember telling that, that yeah, yeah. From, from, from Harrods, the chandelier yeah. and in the house. Yeah. But, it's funny but getting back to the United Lane, the most interesting one, well, first of all, I should say that there was a kind of an upkeep then, wasn't there? It was his mother, the, the last night, Desmond will call him, was his, yeah. was his, his father was an American? No, no, his stepfather. His stepfather, his, was it? His yeah. Father, his father and his, his mother wasn't a very, she was a hard one to get on with, and the father died, you know. Um, a broken yeah, heart, I suppose, is it? Well, he died because he wanted to. <laughs> but uh, she then uh, snapped herself a, a Canadian millionaire. He made money yeah. on the railroads. And uh, she they went to live in Canada. And he went to live with her in Canada. But they had a very. He, Milner was your man's name, the millionaire. And uh, Ray, Ray Milner. But he was. Because he kept the castle. Like yeah. he, put the, he poured money into the castle and had it restored. And but um, she she went over to Canada then she built uh, Veronica was her name uh, she was Veronica Milner then and she did a beautiful garden out in Canada she she had this island and she developed because she had the money to do it mm -hmm. and she could pay labour and she developed this, these islands and Prince Charles and 
Lady Diana visited it. There's pictures. She did a book for his garden. And um, which the Canadian government have, have it now. They bought it out, which was a fantastic garden. But like that, when you have money, you can do lots of things. So she had Canada and Lynn. Yeah. And then through her influence and through Milner, they got in contact with lots of other millionaires and Americans and Canadians who came to St. Glynn, uh, who would never have heard of Glynn and heard of the castle. And up to when I grew up in Glynn, <clears throat> Glynn Castle, you'd see people arriving in uh, big cars, limousines, chauffeur driven, and getting, you know, booking the castle for a week. And uh, certainly it was a different lifestyle that we were used to, um, you know. And so a lot of times the night wouldn't be there, he'd be gone away. And they'd have access, and the staff would just allow them in, and they'd have the free reign of the castle. And the night they lived in a kind of a an annex was a, a nice word for it, off the castle. So they had the full room of the castle. Um, now how the antiques of that? I suppose if you're a millionaire, you don't rob stuff. But they survived that. And another thing we were aware of when you mentioned about the walks that anything that was nailed down, you had to put it away because you know people could take souvenirs. And, and you know, because <laughs> like <laughs> one of the, the women who worked in the castle told me that they even robbed the toilet rolls of souvenirs, which is a whole, you know, uh, <laughs> like so. You have to be, you have to be, you have to be aware of that. Like so, I mean, you you're the people, the the family are good enough to give you the castle, the castle, you know, to make money, and you, you'd hate to think. Anything would be taken and on them, like you know. Sure. Even the the night's book would be laid out on the table now. You know the book we did on the night's again, and you you'd, you'd have to keep an eye on it because somebody would be reading it. The only thing, the only advantage is it's too big to put under your coat. Too big, couldn't. Or, or, into, or into a handbag. Yeah, yeah. But but, um, but the same happened with the Dun Ravens. There was an inheritance there yeah. as well, with uh, with uh, yeah. an American, I think, as well. Somebody else. Oh, yeah. Because in, was it 1911? The, the last uh, Earl's uh, mother, did she marry an American as well? A wealthy yeah. American? Yeah. There's some connection there. And, and, and in, uh, at the close of the 19th century, the Glen was in, in, in a state of flux as well. It was being run down, and you, the night was in a state of depression. But, um, the Dunraven's daughter brought in ten thousand pounds in a dowry. The, the night, the night in uh, the last night's grandmother was, uh, and she died in childbirth. So she had one child, which was the night's father. But she brought ten thousand pounds back back in the pre-war, pre-first world war. It was huge money, you know. And she yeah. died in nineteen oh one in childbirth. So they, they couldn't get the money back, the dowry back. So the, the you know it was going into the estate. But uh, like that's. Because that's how the that's how the castle was saved. Lincoln Castle was saved uh, through shrewd, shrewd marriages, you know. Oh yeah, well, that, uh, they happened a fair few of them in, in other parts yeah. of Ireland. I'm sure it happened in England as well. But I know it happened. But the, the other one that uh, intrigues me is uh, the night <laughs> the night of the women. <laughs> oh yeah, it was some children. But, but you like it's it's different times and yeah, like when, when you're taking people around the castle. All they want to know is about the night of women. They don't know want to know about the jewel, which of the jewelist who, yeah, who yeah. fought jewels. They don't want to. They, they don't want to know about the uh, the brothers who fought over religion and who changed their religion. They just want to hear the salacious stories about. And like the thing, the thing about it, you know, you read nowadays about the Me Too Brigade and all that. But he was lo- adored by his tenants, you know, and like it was. It's hard to explain to younger people now, like the. He took advantage of women. He had mistresses all over the place. Um, you know, there was illegitimate children going to school, and like, uh, but he wasn't the first night to have a mm. But he had the vast majority of them. And his wife left him uh, because of his behaviour. And you know, he had a couple of mistresses in town, and she went back. She was the daughter of a clergyman, so she went back to England. Mm. So in 1833, he. Uh, in, he coaxed her back. He said he'd, be, you know, he'd be good. change his behavior, and yeah. right? he'd, he'd, he'd be a good boy and behave himself. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he was worse than ever. Like, he, yeah. like uh, and um, you know, he he had a, a 
the, there was a beautiful house, Birchwood House, you know Kahara House, but it was a matching house, Birchwood House, back west of the castle, and uh, she had that pulled down, and the story went, the official story is that she pulled it down because it was confusing for visitor, visitors, you know, yeah. that they'd mistake Kahara House for Birchwood House. But the real reason, it was an hocking shop, a place where he brought <laughs> his mistresses, and they used to have, you know, the, the ladies of the locality would yeah. come gather there, and the night and his friends would meet her, and it was like a hellfire club. And yeah. so she eventually, she, part the, the deal was he had to pull, pull down the house. But he died, he died in 1854 in the workhouse, giving out soup. Like the, fam the family was still, people think the family was in 1847. He was giving out soup to his tenants in the workhouse and uh, working. It's like Desmond Guinness gone off out to uh, bring in the cattle. You know, people don't think of knights doing menial no, work. No, do but he was, he was in the workhouse. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe he had women in there, I don't know. But he, 1854, he was there giving out soup. And he, con he contracted cholera and died. But if you go through the records, he had fathered children right up to the 1850s, you know, illegitimate children, right up to the 1850s. And um, like it's, it's something you wouldn't write about because a lot of the descendants uh, of, the, of, of that night would be well, around. And I, the trouble now with DNA, they could find out very easily. DNA, if they're willing to do it, you could, uh, you could have and, some great fun. But because I remember like, one time a man telling me a story about a particular family, and uh, they were from um, out in Bananiti, the Crocos. The yeah. Crocos were the, were the big landowners. And we were talking about the Crocos, and this man was telling me about a particular family. Yeah. And when I told him I knew who he was talking about, the man nearly had a seizure. He ran mm. away from me. You know, and I called yeah. him back, he wouldn't come back. Because mm. people got afraid. Yeah. Because yeah. the story was handed down. Yeah. It'd be interesting to do DNA now and that, you know, because oh, yeah, yeah. There are I met one of the crocos came there a few years ago. He came to Limerick to so come back and his relatives. Mm. And uh, he was actually he was a what's it called a uh, Queen's Council. Yeah. And it's interesting to see like but well, that's that happened now. What well, there is this uh, I might be pronouncing this uh, correctly now, was uh, was it through it the senor? Yeah. The 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 the, the landlords had rights. Yeah. Yeah. Women. Yeah. Yeah. You see, yeah. the only I suppose if you look as um as you mentioned it last week again, I was watching it again last night. Roots, I suppose yeah. roots show you as well what what did go yeah. on, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Exploitation. We call it exploitation, but there was a they also had a Latin term for it. Uh, yeah, use primus noctis, the right of the first night, and it was. Night is in N N I G H T, and he, like, it, it wasn't. It was more on the breach than the observance. But he had the right if he fancied a tenant's daughter yeah. Yeah. to have the. And it, it wasn't frowned upon by neighbours. It wasn't. It was accepted as being. Yeah. You yeah. know. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a different social <laughs> values back then. Um, yeah, it happened the most estates because yeah. he had a complete power and control over the tenants at the time. And well, the middlemen didn't get involved, which middlemen we forget. I never heard the middlemen till, uh, I suppose, yeah. about, about 30 years ago, what middlemen yeah. were. You know, how. Yeah, well, you, you, had, you had agents, and you, had, you, had, you had agents, and you had middlemen. Yeah. The, agents, the agents ran the estate for the night, but, uh, for the landlord. But the middlemen were guys who took chunks of land, as we say, town land. Uh, and the night was glad to get that money. Oh, yeah. Just up front. And yeah. then he would lease at a higher level, you know, at a higher rate and divide it up and maybe let it out in acres or just plots. Uh, but they were, they were hated more than the landlords uh, because they were, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Terrible. I mean, a, would you wonder like the, 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 the true nation between the famine, people shot the food and tried to, to live on a half acre, you know, yeah. with a cow. It's crazy. Yeah. And if, if they had, Children, if they had four sons and tried to subdivide that land between yeah. sons, I mean, the whole thing was was ridiculous, in one sense. But yeah, middlemen yeah. were getting their were getting their rents and paying it to the head landlord, who yeah, usually yeah. wasn't living in the country at all. No, the no. amount of absentees and the, the amount of rent going out of the country. Lenin quotes it in pages in his history of the amount of, of money that was leaving the country every it, week going to England. But, the thing about Lenihan is, every time you read it, you find something new in it. Like you know, it's just it, even the footnote. 
like there's pages where the footnotes are more than the text, you know, and it's, uh -huh. I often think the footnotes are better than the, okay. the text, you know. Yeah. And like, like it's amazing how you tie in things. Like I was reading about uh, a ship that came up on B, it, it, the, the carcass of it, or the remains of it, is still in, when, the, when the, the winter tide comes, it exposes the remains of the ship there. And it was carrying brandy and whiskey and, uh, Paul de Bruyne did a, a story about the um, Ballier, the, the faction fight in Ballier, and they maintained that it was the hidden whiskey and brandy off the titus that they had. They, they robbed all the whiskey and brandy off of it, and they stored it away. And on on, on the day of the of, of the Ballier races, they, they took out the whiskey and drank it, and yeah. that's what fueled the faction fight. There were sixteen people killed, and as uh, it was the uh, there's a between a and a faction fight, like you know. So it's it, it's uh, it, you know, and like when you see what went on at Kalani last night, we haven't changed much. Just give give them liquor and they'll do anything, you know. Oh, tell me, but like that with uh, with with fact, faction fights were fascinating, fascinating yeah. when you weren't involved between the the two year olds and the three year olds and yeah, the yeah. families that fought, you know. In Newport now comes to mind straight away. The coffee's in Newport, and you had various yeah. marines, of course. God, they were desperate. But well, well, every day, every fair, like there was like out in Glen Row, Drummond Fair. There was there's places. There was fairs in places which I can't even make, make out where they were. You know, uh, place names that have gone out of memory you now. Yeah, yeah. And the 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 murders and like the punishment then. The, kind of, the attitude was, are they more than each other? Like, there was a fellow who was killed in Glynn, a Driscoll man killed in a fair with a faction fight. And the the punishment for the fellow that killed him was, he was burnt in the hand. Just, that was a regular thing. They had a, a branding iron in the court and they branded him. So, burnt in the hand was the punishment. This is for murder, like, so they didn't take it. He wasn't transported, or he, you know. Uh, but if he, hit one of the policemen who was trying to separate them, he'd be transported straight away, you know. Um, but there was, a, there was a kind of a, a lax attitude until then when they realised that the police were getting involved and getting killed, that's when they tried to suppress it. Like, and the clergy played a big part in suppressing it as well. But when, like when when the drink was available, there was usually a row, you know. So, um, it's a to place to be in, isn't it? You know, usually I, nine, nine times out of ten, it is a. I think, I think Father Matthew had a. Had a Daniel O'Connell um, came out against two things, dueling and faction fighting. And, you know, even though he was involved in himself, he, he, he turned against it. And he also turned against, you know, he, he spoke out against violence and faction fighting. And that combined with Father Matthew and the people taking the pledge uh, was. And had had some bearing on it. Although we could we could do it both. We could do it a, a good man like Daniel O'Connell and like Father Matthew back again now. But, um, yeah, if we, got, if we got Father Matthew back anyway. Would have been a harm, you know. I often say yeah, that. Yeah. You know, yeah. get Father Matthew back. Because Father Lenin gives a, a source of a Father Matthew. Pre, I think it was his sister. He lived. Uh, she lived in Mallow Street, and there was something like I think eight or ten thousand people. In Mallow Street, can you imagine down in Mallow yeah. Street outside yeah. her house waiting for it to come out? You know, all yeah. gathered outside. And uh, sure. when, he, when he arrived in Limerick, they came up in boats from yeah. Clare and Limerick, yeah. and uh, and they came in from Tipperary. The, the place, this town, was yeah. I, I, I saw the figure, it was huge. Like, and the, the following here was something phenomenal, you know. Um, but then again, there was kind of uh, a jealousy amongst the clergy as well that he was, you know, t there was. He was taking money that they, they, they could, you know. Yeah, oh yeah. They were right with him to talk. in Limerick, don't forget as well, with the Jesuits. Yeah. With the building of, um, of uh, I can't think of it, I can't think of St. Joseph's Church. So, yeah. Because there was no church in that area, in, yeah. the, which, uh, in the, this end of the city, let's say. And most of the people were either going to the Dominicans or to the Jesuits. Yeah. And the bishop at the time said, this isn't good yeah. enough. There's no money coming into us, so yeah. they decided to build St Joseph's Church. I can't think of that. There's a site uh, for it now, something like the Vegan Church. Or, but 
But anyway, yeah. there's, uh, the, that's how St. Joseph's Church happened to be, built in yeah. an open space there, to take the, the money away from the Jesuits. There's a lovely little pam a pamphlet, it's not a book written about St. Joseph's. Um, no, there is, yeah. What's her name? Uh, Margaret, Margaret uh, Lily. Yeah. You know, she's a book, yeah, on St. Joseph's. Yeah. But like that, it was, uh, that was why it was made. People don't realise that. <laughs> that there's, there's a method sometimes in the building of churches in certain oh, yeah. positions. Yeah. Like the Jesuits, built on the size of, uh, if you're, it's a pity in one sense that the Jesuit, the, the, where well, the school is now next to it, that the beautiful Georgian houses that were on that side were all yeah. demolished to make way for this, the Crescent Hall, yeah. as we know it, yeah, and yeah. the school itself. You can still see the outline of them because in the middle you had a house, a townhouse of John Norris Russell. Mm. And uh, where right. the Jesuits, the, uh, uh, John Norris Russell's house, who was the biggest, he was the biggest flower miller in Europe at the time. Oh, yeah. He wrote yeah. the uh, mills that he had, both in Limerick uh, and in Ennis and in, in the Skeeton. And, uh, the Skeeton, the Skeeton Tabrooks. Um, yeah, he was a, yeah. It's hard to the amount of, of, of milling that, that went down in Limerick. Yeah. But like that, the house, but there's, a, there's Kevin Hannon. I could never actually prove the story. Kevin Hannon said this, uh, which I find a little, it might be a little bit out of kilter. It could be true that John Dallas Russell was completely, his wife was, um, she was brought to Ireland completely against the Catholic situation. The and the story was well. that she supposed to have, Opened a came to a window one morning and just put up the statue to Daniel O'Connell outside the window. Yeah. When she saw when she saw O'Connell got up, she reputed to have drawn her blinds and never opened the blind again. So she'd want yeah. to Daniel O'Connell out the window. Yeah. Looking, well he wasn't looking in at all, he was looking down O'Connell's face. Yeah, but yeah. The story yeah. thought she's yeah. supposed to be no, 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 O'Connell's no, 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 reputation, she might be afraid he'd look in as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw that it lately on a thing on there. Uh, I got an email from somebody about Daniel O'Connor. I forget that what it was about the good man he was. And yeah. I answered it and I just said, oh, you couldn't you couldn't throw a stone in Kevin and hit one of his children, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As well, that's never spoken of. O'Connor oh, yeah. was a man for the women as well. Yeah. You yeah. know, and like that again he'd been a big landowner down in Darren Kerry and bored out of his mind below in, 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 in the house. The one Derry Nan. Derry Nan, yeah, yeah. yeah. He he'd been bored, you know, as well. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. good wonder that but that the, the, the thing with DNA, it can lead to a lot of problems as well. You know, yeah. if people find out yeah. who's who. Well, well I I met a woman recently who did her DNA and wasn't happy with the outcome of let's yeah. say <laughs> that she realized her her father's dead now, but her father or her who she taught her father was and who and then she sat up on two and two together and realized you know if all the rest of the family don't look like me and she um uh, you know so that's like that's like last night in roots where you went chicken jobs found out that what's the actor chuck connors was his, was his father yeah. you know yeah. he thought his father was dead and uh he wanted to murder him and then yeah. the mother, this kizzy said this said this uh you can't kill him he's your father you know yeah yeah He's supposed yeah. to have been shocked. <laughs> Which was well, oh, look at look at some of the big titles in England. Like I know straight off the top of my head, the Duke of Richmond. His people, his uh, come from from uh, Charles II. Yeah. That his great 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 when he great wanted to go back was a was an illegitimate daughter. I think there's three big titles in England who come from Charles II, but yeah. he was able to give them titles. He kind of looked yeah, after. Well, them. Like if you go back to the night, Lino, all his mistresses and his illegitimate children were looked after because a neighbor of mine told me like this. Uh, the part of the deal, the rent deal, was that you brought uh, a creel of turf uh, and potatoes to the mistress's house, as you know, that was the deal. And oh, they were looked after. They got a house rent free. And, yeah. Yeah. But this is uh, when she had outserved her purpose, like, yeah. even for life, she had a rent free for life. And you know, every knew the family were, uh, you know, and like he uh, one time, uh, this guy Francis Fitzgerald went for election. He was a, a, a merchant and baker in England, and he made money. But he was a, an illegitimate son of the knight's grandfather at the time. Yeah. So there's a letter to Monson saying, you know, we don't want this classic guy as as a as a magistrate. 
you know, and he's supposed to be my grandfather's Ill illegitimate son and all this, like, but he, he, he puts it in writing. He knows, like, that he's, he's illegitimate, you know. So um, it, didn't, it didn't hold him back. And lots of, you know, lot, they were looked after, you know. It meant they didn't have to emigrate or, or, or scrape a living, you know. So yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But that, that, that's, as I have said previously a, minute, a few minutes ago, that, that happened in all these states, you know. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, probably... But even, but even uh, and, and the thing was, is people think, oh, they were horrible landlords, people who did this now. They weren't, like, the, the, the Night of the Women was the most respected night I, I can think of in by his tenantry. He was loved by his tenantry, and, you know, um, he was very fair to them, and, you know, like... Like I said, he looked after him during the famine, and he, you know, you'd know there was no, there was no, like, and despite the fact that he was a, a lecturer and had loads of mistresses and everything, that didn't, people didn't hold that against him. Whereas nowadays, he'd be kicked out of office, so he'd be, you know, there'd be uproar. But yeah. back then, it was, it was accepted as part of, you know, that was what they did. You know? yeah. And it's kind of, we well, see, the, the problem is now you have got, you have some guys. Who tried to do this kind of, which annoys me, is trying to take current values and impose them on history and say, wasn't he terrible? You know, or when, like, you know, even back to, you know, Jimmy Savile and all those, like people say, how was he allowed to do this? But I mean, he, at that time, somebody who was on television had power over people, you oh, know, people would, yeah. you know, and who was going to come in and say, you know, Jimmy Savile, did this to me, or did that to me? Yeah, the same yeah. with the film producer in America, the same thing. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And, um, and like, control over people. Yeah, and the thing is, like, you wouldn't be believed back then, you know. Like, if you went along and said, that, you know, that, they'd say, well, wh wh why were you in there in the first place, or whatever, you know, I'm not justifying yeah. what they did. But that's, but see, people try and put, you know, like, uh, somebody told me recently, there was, on, on social media, somebody commented that, Patrick Sassfield was associated with a paedophile because uh, King James married a 13 year old. And like, it just shows the ignorance of the person who said that because, you know, yeah. kings married women from 12 on, like 12 years on. Yeah. And that was, you know, once it was accepted once a woman could produ produce children, she could yeah. get married. You know, and like, it wasn't just royalty. I've told you before, there was a woman in Glen who wrote to the papers about her husband mistreating her and she was 13 years of age. You know, she was married at 13. Mm. Uh, and that was that was the accepted thing at the time. But now, like, if you're under 18, you're treated as a child. But back then, you know, you, you got married at 13, 14, 15, 16, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. And, like, it's people putting their own kind of modern-day values uh, on history. Yeah. But, you know. Jump, jump back again, just something that come to mind now, but we're coming up to you now, is yeah. um, Father Matthew. He came, to, it's a pity that his house is in, well, where he came from, that the house that the family came out of is in ruins now. It's a shame, right. really. It's uh, yeah. in uh, Thomastown. It's on the way near near Cashel, between Tipperary yeah. and Cashel. Yeah. You can see the ruins of it inside, near the village of Golden. Yeah. If you're on that road, and you see the Thomastown Castle inside. Yeah. And it's a pity it's in such a state. There's nothing to really be left now. There, there were they were well to do a fat well. Oh, but well, it's the old Taurus, the old Moses Taurus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, they're a very wealthy family. But like, a lot of them remain Catholic. That's something else we're not told. That, like, all these families were, were Protestants, they weren't. You yeah. know, a lot of them remain Catholic and just kept it quiet. You yeah. know, like down the, the American mayor down in Cork or down in Kerry. And actually, some of them were buried inside in the, in the, the cathedral in Kilami. Yeah. The, the, the Elizabeth Mayor of there, but it's inside there. We forget like they remained Catholic and still the have power, But the power of the Browns had Ken Mayor, like, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, they, yeah, yeah. they took, they took Ken Mayor. It's actually the village is Nadine. The name Ken Mayor comes from out in the hospital in County Limerick. Right. Yeah. land as well. So when they moved down to live, they took the name Ken Mayor with them down there. Yeah. You know, actually, Nadine is the proper name, whereas yeah. Ken Mayor is outside in the hospital in County Limerick. Right, yeah. Mayor Castle is still there, actually. Just you go into um, as you go into the village of hospital, it's not a castle as such, it's just a, a yes. house there on yeah. the left hand side. As you go into the village of hospital, but yeah. they, they had most of the uh, they own most of the property in, in the village of hospital. And you get, 
and they had half, I think they had half a Ken Mayer, and the other side was belonging to the Marcus of Lansdowne. That's right, yeah. The, the, the petties that we'll talk about some other night, but yeah. sometimes you get that a lot. There's two landlords who have owned half the village. Patrick's Well, I think it happened as well. You'd yeah. West Top on one side, and you had the Roses and the Radies on the other side. And and and, and again, the nice thing on anyone's ha- on your ha- half the village, the other half is owned by the Cray family, you know. So, so yeah, you see, you get that yeah. a lot in villages that yeah. one half was owned by well, if they had it on their own land, and then the other family would own the other side. Yeah, yeah. Automatically think, oh, that was owned by such a fellow, you know. But it yeah. wasn't when you start going back into the deeds and looking yeah. at the, the title in that. Anyway. Actually, that's another fellow that I was reading, Gerard Lyne. He did a history of the uh, Ken Mayer estates. Lansdowne estates. Lansdowne estates, yeah. He's yeah, a huge one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, and he, he, was, he was writing in the carriage journal. But it's amazing, all, all the people that, that were writing back then, so, well, it's 40, 45 years ago, but uh, they're dead. Two, Nick Park, the Brown's still alive, really. But, um, and Brendan, Brendan O'Connor died last year. But, it's, you know, I suppose, we're all getting older, like, you know. Yeah, a lot of them are gone, like, and we have to talk about Manny's choice, so we'll talk about it some other night, and yeah. what he did over the years. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, he played he played Lonely Furrow, like, he was the only voice of history, like, when history wasn't popular, you know. Mm-hmm. People forget, I suppose, when we started off, history wasn't, uh, no. you know, it's kind, no. it was kind of a, a, a murky yeah, kind of a... Enough. Through like through through programs like this now and the, the old radio program that I had for yeah. years and eleven yeah. years, that brought a lot of people into local history. It did, yeah. Give right. me some bit of an interest. People, and people, people often say people, people, people often, often say uh, we hope God is good for, for lectures for the winter. We'll see where things go, you know, yeah. with the limited well, yeah. Um yeah. thank you again for coming on. Okay, okay Tony. Right. We'll talk again. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Look, Joe. Yeah. Okay, so so for me, Tony Brown from the, the Limerick Historical Society on Web Media, and you can check this up on and uh, just put into your computer Web that media, and you'll see my ugly posts and, and Tom Dunnans again if you want to look back on any of these. I tell people was it that they were used to listening to the radio program for years yeah. and years, and I, so unfortunately, that people I know did as well, but. Yeah, uh, yeah. But you can tell them that we are on, they might want to see it again and bring it yeah. other interest back into local history. So I'll out there to um, good luck to you and uh, thanks for watching, okay? Good night.